Okay, uh, we are live. So, uh, hi everybody. Um, it's the first um, uh, Google Summer of Code um, uh, public demo. We are going to show the current uh, status of uh, uh, JSOC projects. Um, um, I'll start from a short presentation and then uh, we will have uh, demos uh, by all of our students. Okay, um, so my name is Oleg Minashev. I'm one of uh, JSOC ORC admins. Other ORC admins are Martin Anjo and uh, uh, Steven Christo, uh, which are also on the call. Okay. If you have never participated in uh, JSOC uh, before, it's uh, one of the uh, most uh, popular uh, open source initiatives and one of the biggest ones. It has uh, more than 30,000 students uh, uh, over 13 years. And uh, yeah, there are hundreds of open source organizations uh, which participated in this project. Generally, uh, students work uh, with open source organizations uh, in order to work on open source projects. Uh, it's considered as a kind of summer internship. It's a full-time program, so students uh, code uh, almost full-time. Uh, uh, by the way, do I share the screen? Okay, good start. You're not sharing the screen yet. Yeah, there's no screen share. Okay. Okay, now you're sharing. Okay, so uh, a good start. Yeah. Um, so what I was going to say that uh, JSOC is uh, the most popular projects. Um, uh, students work uh, almost full time, and uh, this is uh, the second year when um, Jenkins participates in uh, Google Summer of Code. Uh, so uh, we have uh, three students uh, this year. If you're interested to know more about uh, Google Summer of Code, you can visit resources on uh, Jenkins' website. So we have a separate project page uh, where you can find all information about JSOC. We have uh, multiple blog posts on Jenkins.io, and uh, for this phase, uh, there will be also blog posts by students. And we also have a Gitter channel uh, where you can discuss uh, everything about JSOC. So uh, this year, as I said, we have three projects. Uh, Shin Yu Zhang uh, is working on code coverage API plugin. Uh, Wutuan uh, works on remote and cover Kafka, which includes uh, plugin and uh, client so that uh, agents can communicate over remoting. And Abhishek Gautama is working on a simple pull request uh, job uh, plugin. Um, and we had uh, other projects uh, announced, but unfortunately, uh, the students were unable to participate. So yeah, this year we have three projects. And uh, yeah, even if uh, it's just the first coding phase demo, actually there was um, a long uh, discussion before so um, and long uh, process before. So the Mm, we started um, discussions about JSOC in December. In uh, February, the projects were announced. Then there was a selection process. And uh, for the last uh, two months, uh, we are talking about, uh, um, yeah, we were working on project designs. And then finally, we started coding. And there are still uh, eight weeks of coding ahead. And we are going to finish JSOC uh, in mid-August this year. Uh, but we already have something to show you. And uh, this is... Uh, um, why we have uh, this meeting. So if you have any questions uh, during the presentations, uh, please use uh, Jenkins RC channel on Freenode or our Gitter channel. I, I will be monitoring uh, all these resources. And if you have any questions, I will pass them to students. But yeah, the main agenda for today is, of course, uh, uh, presentations by students. So, so we will start from Xingyu, who will present uh, Code Coverage API. Then uh, we'll have remoting, and then we uh, will have a simple pull request job. So uh, that's it uh, from me. Um, Xingyu, are, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. OK. So, so yeah. Yeah. I will share my screen to mm -hmm. show the presentation. Wait for a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Uh, just a second, I will share it uh, with everybody else. Oh. Yeah. So so so. Uh, my project. Uh, my project. Uh, uh is uh, called Coverage API, and uh, 
uh, I have participated in this year's uh, GSOC, and my project is Jenkins Code Coverage API plugin. And my mentors are Steven Clifton, Supern, Jeff, and Oleg. And they give me so much help, help in this project, and uh, I, uh, I'm very appreciative. them. So uh, about me, my name is Sun Yu Jun, and uh, this is my GitHub account. Uh, I am a third year student in computer science and technology at Henan University from China. Uh, I like programming and reading, especially reading some book about uh, histor history and uh, philosophy. Philosophy. So, uh, why we need this pro this project? Why we need this plugin? I think uh, there are uh, several reasons. First, there are a lot of plugins which we currently implement uh, code coverage. For example, we have commercial plugin. We have Jacoco plugin, we have Clover plugin, and uh, so on. So uh, we st uh, we have so much so many uh, plugins uh, uh, about uh, code culture now. If uh, there uh, will have if there will have more code code coverage uh, tools, maybe we need more code coverage plugin. So uh, it is better we have a more generic plugin to integrate them. Them. Also, the second, most code coverage reports have the same structure. It is to say all coverage reports can be represented by a true structure. They can, uh, they can uh, be passed to a true, a true. Uh, each, node, each metric can have a child nodes each, and a parent nodes. So the structure of a coverage report is the same. Third is most coverage reports have the similar content. Uh, it is say, for example, uh, for example, um, we, we all have a similar uh, field like uh, uh, Mr. Line, covered line, branch, Mr. Branch, covered. So we have, so for those reports, they have similar content. Uh, so. There is, so this is why we need this plugin. We can have a plugin to do the most repeat things for them so that uh, they can do only the uh, core part uh, and the most repeat work uh, like pass, pass reporter and uh, uh, like found a reporter. Uh, we can all, uh, we can, can be, can all be done by our plugin. So, uh, we, uh, we, uh, as, we, uh, as we have said before, uh, we, we can have a plugin do the most repeat work. So what is the most repeat work? Uh, for most uh, coverage plugin, they usually do many do three things. They found the reports, they pass the reports, and they show the reports. So, we, so they all do the same thing as, so, uh, but, uh, so uh, we can uh, so we can um, so we can have a we can have a code coverage program which we do all the things same and uh, so that the uh, other pro coverage programs only need to do one thing convert the reports so how to convert the reports and uh, uh, what, what is convert the reports uh, uh, in code coverage API plugin uh, the basic uh, we have uh, four basic process. First, we found coverage reports according to users configure. Then, use add paths to convert reports into or stand format. Uh, then, pass stand format reports and aggregate them. Finally, show past the results in a chart. So, we have found reports for all code coverage. Uh, for all for all code coverage tools, and we have passed those reports. We have shown those reports. Other plugins only need one thing: use add paths to uh to only need to do one thing: convert report into OR standard format. So this is OR uh plugin structure. We have a Kabashura publish, which will find all those add path uh add so 
uh, adipad, uh, adipad is a uh, uh, is a uh, uh, so other uh, code, uh, so uh, so if we want to implement a new co a coverage top, we we only need to implement a ad part and uh, all uh, coverage publish will find them and uh, uh, to show it to and show it to use users so user can configure them and uh, once user have configured them uh, 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 coverage process will uh, find those report reports and uh, pa uh, pass those reports to Adipat. Adipat will convert report to results. Result. Finally, coverage process will aggregate those result results into coverage result. So, uh, this is the uh, basic structure of, of our plugin. Uh, uh, in uh, phase one, we have uh, those task uh, prototype based on Kabashula plugin data model. Uh, integrate other Java code coverage tool and uh, audio detect support, health support, and uh, so on. I will show it on a uh, live demo. So uh, we can have a live demo with five minutes. I will. Okay. So uh, in code coverage uh, plugin, we can configure by two way, by two ways. One is through build stop. Uh, configure. Uh, as you can see, we can. Uh, we have a uh, auto detector mechanism, which can find the report automatically and uh, group them into its correspond ID pad, uh, so that we uh, will not need to uh, figure out what the report name or call to generate is, and also we can specify it manually. Uh, like that, we can specify it uh, to jcoco uh, XML file, and uh, like that. Also, we have uh, uh, also we have uh, a global slash hold, which you can uh, specify each slash hold, specify each slash hold uh, with the health slash and the stable slash, like that. And uh, we can have uh, uh, and we also have a, a group of uh, uh, options which can uh, fail the uh, build. So failed if there is unhealthy uh, slash. So also we have a, a slash hold for each artifact. Uh, it can make those things more flexible. Um, for example, uh, we can specify slash hold for files uh, uh, for uh, 18. We can specify uh, we can specify health threshold uh, to uh, 18 for all of uh, failed metric. Uh, but we can set uh, Jcoco to uh, 19 like that. It can make uh, the whole threshold mechanism more flexible. So, uh, so we can save this configuration and configuration configuration and uh, uh, start to build it. Okay, it seems to me some time. So uh, we have a specified uh, a stable slash hold to, uh, we have a specified a stable slash hold to uh, 15. So, uh, so they have metric below 15, so it should unstable. unstable. Uh, we can see the coverage report. Uh, as you can see, we have a uh, three part of our coverage report. Uh, yeah, we have an example of a pipeline script. So we can uh, drop drop it drop it down and uh, make it more big to see. So uh, as you can see, we can say package is ninety four percent. It is for it is a trend trend chart. But uh, we all we have used the same uh, report, so it is uh, uh, it is no change. So also we can uh, hide each 
hide each uh, matrix and uh, show it like that. We have group 100 and then we have a file, file, okay, file 95. So this is the chart chart. Also, we can have a summary chart. Uh, this is summary chart for current, uh, current uh, metric. Uh, this is whole report, whole report metric. We can click it. This is capacitor report metric. Also, this is the project metric. So, yeah, so we can say uh, in conditions, we have uh, recovered uh, 285 and missed uh, 353. And uh, also, we have a college percentage. We can show it more clearly if we only care about the current line or we only care about a uh, missed uh, line. So, uh, then we have the uh, chart summary chart. Uh, oh yeah, I will sh I will show I will show show it. So we have a child child summary chart. Mm. Uh, we can we can scroll the handle to make it more small, make it more make it smaller to see, and uh, so that we can only care about the core part. Like for example, we only care about the uh, coverage metric below uh, seventy nine, and so on. so we can also. You can also use this bar to uh, make it more clearly. So this is the UI part. And uh, 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 so we can, we can uh, configure it by pipeline. Uh, this one is a pipeline support. Oh, I, I have set the pipeline in SM, okay. Wait for a minute. I will, uh, I will show my another window. Oh, sorry. I will show my. Yeah. So this is our pipeline. Um, we have. Uh, we have show the. Uh, we have set the publish coverage, uh, and set the auto deck pass, set the edit pass, and like that. We also have use we we also use uh, uh bush to uh, build this build this project. This project is a commercial plugin. Uh, it is the real project, not for demo. Yeah. So. So, we have configured configured the configured the uh, report generate in Maven file. Okay, so we have a configure Jekyll code generate. We have a configure Kabachula generated generation. So this one, this tool will generate a college report when we when we reach the package phase. Okay, so I will show the the other other parts. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we can create build, but it uh, may cost some time. As you can see, we so we use the we use the other builder to show it to save our time. So, this is the Kabachula. Uh, Plugin. We have generated a Jacoco report and a, a Kabachula report. So for Jacoco, oh, okay, wait for a minute. The, the build task is uh, slow my computer, I think. So this is our project level. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we have. Uh, So this is the uh, pipeline support. Uh, our project. Oh, this segment is uh, uh, used for, uh, for example, um, the Jacoco means it is a Jacoco report. You're not present oh. now. 
Oh, oh, okay, okay. The builder seems stopped my com computer. Okay. So, for, sorry, I will. Okay. So, can you see it? So, can you see my screen? No, we can't. No. C can. Okay. So, oh, still not. Okay, I will uh, stop it and restart. Wait for a minute. Okay, meanwhile, we'll just open uh, your slides. Yeah, okay, so so can you see yes. my screen now? No, I can't see anything. Oh, no. sorry. Okay, so... Uh, so all again, you can uh, open my slide and yes, I can. No. Um, okay, just Sorry for that. Into my screen. This time I won't forget about it. Okay, uh, do you see it? Yeah, I see your screen. Mm. Okay. No, I can't see it. Uh, I can't see it. Oh, maybe I need to uh, re-enter the, re the hands out. Yeah, or you can just open uh, slides uh, in your browser or whatever and uh, talk about uh, the status. And uh, when you need to change the slide, uh, just tell me. Currently, uh, I've opened uh, the phase one plan. Yeah, but uh, OK, so uh, you have opened the phase one plan. OK, wait for a minute. Yeah. So, uh, so we are now in phase one plan statues, right? Yes. So, uh, in phase in phase one plan statues, uh, in phase one plan we have, uh, in phase one plan we have all those tasks, and uh, they, uh, as you can see in my, uh, uh, in my screen sharing before, uh, I have, uh, did them. I have done. Uh, I have done them all. Uh, first, I have uh, using Kabachula plugin data model um, to build the prototype and uh, integrate uh, and integrate the uh, Coco coverage tool. And also have auto detect support. Uh, also have health report support and pipeline support and slash hold support. Also modernize the report and uh, have some unit test. So <laughs> this is the current status. So, Phase one plan is completed. Or mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we can uh, move to next. Okay. Yeah. So in next phase plan, um, we are uh, mainly do those things. First, uh, we now is a code coverage plugin, but uh, still not a API plug. Still not a API plugin. So in next phase, we will uh, we are mainly do. So then first, integrate Kabachula plugin with the uh, code coverage API. Uh, it is mean Kabachula plugin, uh, also, also we have integrated Kabachula plugin now, but we don't have back for the capacity. It means uh, if we have, uh, if we use Kabachula plugin before, uh, we cannot uh, convert the reporter to our current, uh, current uh, Report. Uh, so I will plan to uh, integrate the Kabachua plugin and keep the back for back capacity, and uh, so user can move from Kabachua plugin plug to our plugin without lose any uh, any historical historic coverage report. And the second uh, is provide a Java API and the RESTful API for get for getting coverage information. It is means that others can through Java API or RESTful API to get uh, coverage uh, information like uh, uh, like uh, so that they can uh, they can use those information in their own dashboard and uh, it uh, makes uh, it will makes uh, uh, so it uh, it will makes others more easy to to integrate uh, other. 
uh, integrate uh, many uh, reports in their own dashboard. And then we plan to implement an abstract layer for other report format, like JSON. Now we only support uh, support uh, XML file. So uh, in next phase, I plan to implement uh, JSON report format. Uh, second, the uh, third, we plan to support a comment for no Java language. For now, we only support a Java language, uh, Java, lang Java code coverage tool like uh, Jacoco and Kabashula. In next phase, I plan to support other language. And uh, also we plan to support a, a combining reports within a builder. Uh, it means uh, we can uh, call the publish coverage multi-time uh, in, in one builder and uh, we can integrate them together. Finally, we we finally we will reflecting config page configuration page to make it more user friendly and uh, more easy to use. And uh, this uh, so this is uh, our next phase plan. And uh, so we can move to next. Okay. So this is a uh, uh, links. This is the related links for our plug in uh, GitHub repository, GitHub chat, uh, or project page in Jenkins and the introduction blog post. Uh, you can, you can uh, see the, you can uh, in the blog post to see more information. So um, we can move to the final. Okay, so, I was just uh, showing some pages. Mm. Okay. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Ara. So I think uh, it's done. Okay. Thank you, Shinya. Um, okay, sorry for uh, sorry for the <laughs> screen sharing, and uh, thanks. Yeah, it always happens. No problem. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So regarding open questions, uh, JC uh, asks uh, that uh, uh, generic uh, uh, pattern parameter uh, as a pa part of publish coverage. Uh, would uh, this not always be specific to a coverage tool? So regarding JSON support, I was surprised to see generic fail pattern from other Yeah, so I guess I just wonder whether the formats uh, are the same or not. Oh, no, you can use the other other uh, file pattern format. Uh, you can use other file pattern uh, as a parameter. Oh yeah, the, I, I just uh, uh, write it for convenience. We can specify. We can set it more specified. Like uh, uh, this is and style path, so we can make it more specified. And I also plan to add uh, mm -hmm. uh, exclude. Yeah. So actually, um, it's one oh, of the. Oh. Oh, sorry. Oh, Jacoco, yeah. So if Jacoco, uh, I have not implemented auto detect uh, for Jacoco, but uh, it is easy to implement. So if I have, if I ha had implemented it, it will, it can be done. I, I think it is not hard to implement. So it will, uh, it can be, it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. And for the next phase, uh, we also have a task to move uh, auto detection logic to the um, converter path. So auto detection will be just one of the um, options in this drop down list. So it uh, will uh, be more explicit for users then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can search all college report in next phase and then more easy. And uh, like you say, like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess it answers your question, JC, right? Yeah, but uh, by the way, there is a participant link. It's unrelated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I propose uh, to take uh, this discussion uh, offline. So, um, yeah, it's a valuable proposal. Um, yeah, so we're a bit behind uh, time. 
Uh, so I uh, wanted to ask whether somebody of mentors want uh, to do a brief summary about the project before we move on. Okay, then uh, I'll do it. I'll, I'm one of the mentors. Or oh, do you want to do it, Stephen? Um, so just kind of like a, a quick overview of the whole thing, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Or, um, so I guess Cher pretty much covered, um, I guess, everything that was kind of needed for it. Um, we finished, I, I guess his slides kind of showed like we completed a lot of the initial tasks, and um, we have a lot more kind of heading the way for the next phase as well, um, including trying to integrate with the new, or trying to integrate with the the current Cobertura plugin to make this available even for um, like the, um, to, to make it available for kind of everyone that uses Cobertura already. Um, we're still kind of working on the, the, the details a little bit, but uh, it should be completed by the next phase for our demo again. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah. So from uh, my point of view, uh, you uh, definitely ahead the schedule. So uh, yeah. one of the things is that we had first a demo of the plugin, uh, if I recall correctly, on the second day of uh, coding phase. So even at that point, we already did get some progress, and uh, yeah, it was uh, nice uh, to see how the uh, project improves uh, over this phase. And I would say that Shenyu was working mostly independently. So yeah, we were doing a lot of sync ups, etc. But he was uh, the one who was defining uh, uh, the plan and priorities. So I think the project uh, goes really well, and yeah. Um, I'm looking forward uh, to see how it evolves during the next phases. Yeah, I agree. OK, mm, so since uh, there is no more questions, uh, let's uh, place it in the chat. And uh, yeah, let's continue with the second presentation. So Bhutan will talk about remoting over Kafka. OK, so should I start? Oh, OK. Yeah, you can uh, just uh, share your screen and uh, then continue the presentation. OK. OK, can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Yeah, OK, so hello, everybody. So this is my presentation for Google Summer of Code for the first phase evaluation. So my project is Jenkins remoting over message, bus, and queue. And some quick introduction. So I'm a final year uh, computer science student from Singapore. And it, this is my first time participate in Google Summer of Code and contribute to an open source organization. And uh, working together with me, I have uh, two mentors, Oleg and Supun as a GSOC mentor. And also I have the support from Jeff and David. They are developers of the remote team project. So I will give some overview about the project. So currently, we have Jenkins use TCP as a communication protocol for the master and agent master agent communication. And with TCP, we have some problems. First is if the connection or the agent fails, the view fails, and we have to restart things over again. Another issue we may encounter is we have the traffic prioritized prioritization and multi-agent communication. This impact the Jenkins scalability and stability. So the goal of this project is we want to make use of a message bus technology to develop as a plugin to use Jenkins remoting in order to build a fault tolerant communication layer in Jenkins. So uh, why we use Kafka? So at first we 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 think about, we decide about the using the traditional message queue, such as RabbitMQ or ActiveMQ. Then after some discussion, we decide to use Kafka because it's, it might have some suitable features which may suitable for Jenkins remote thing. So the first reason is, is 
Kafka is not a queue. It's not a traditional queue. It's a distributed and re replicated commit law. It have to remove the message delivery, which might have to remove the message delivery complexity. And the second reason is Kafka support data streaming, which Rabbit MQ is currently like of. And also Kafka is has to set to be a uh, scale better and has a good support from the development community. So yeah, so for the first side plan, because the project itself contain a consists of many components. So we want to deliver the project as a set of Docker compose components. Docker compose components. We have a Kafka cluster, Jenkins master with the plugin inside, and a custom agent which to connect with master using uh, using Kafka. And in the first way, we want to create a POC with a new command transport implementation to support Kafka. So it involves a basic things such as command, command invocation, remote method invocation, class loading, and data streaming. So in order to do this, we have we need to implement a new com command transport, and we need to also need to do change in remoting and call to make them extensible. And in the end of the first way, we want to decide whether we should use Kafka or not in our final implementation. And an optional one is we want to release an alpha version of the plugin by the end of the first way. So the the project structure is as follows. So first we have a we have a Kafka client library. This one implement the implement the Kafka classic command transport, which extend from the existing command transport we have in remoting. It also has a uh, packaging the producer and consumer program inside. Uh, the next part is the uh, I have a remoting Kafka plugin. So the which the plugin do is, is provide the configuration for master to connect to master to connect to Kafka and trigger connection to agent. And also we build a custom agent which use custom command transport to connect to master. And all these things are like a packaging, a package using Docker Compose. So to give an overview of the design, so we have Jenkins master and we have the remoting Kafka plugin. Inside we have the Kafka global configuration where we we can specify the connection to the Kafka cluster. And also there's a Kafka computer launcher which extend the existing computer launcher which use the command, the, the new command transport to connect to Kafka to do the command in, to do the communication. And similarly, from the agent side, we also use the new command transport with engine, with a custom engine to do the connection as well as we bundle the remote thing SSR in the agent. So now the connection from master to agent, we are not using direct TCP anymore. Instead, we connect and do the command things over Kafka. So for the next, for the next part, I will do the, do the live demo of the of currently implementation. Uh, okay. So the demo is consists of we have uh, multiple components inside. We have Zookeeper and Kafka as a message. Uh, Kafka, yeah, and then the Docker Compose also, also packaging packaging agent and how to start an agent. Also packaging the ranking score. So the first step is to, to build the things. And we start the service. So as we see from here, we we start the service as uh, as Docker Compose. We have Kafka and Zookeeper. We have the Asian program agent program how to start an agent and waiting waiting to start uh, waiting to connect to master and we have the master instance uh, okay. so if we see from the UI uh,
So I have a fresh new fresh. Uh, I have a new fresh Zenkin master here. Okay. So we can provide the Kafka connection URL in the global configuration. And, and start an agent using Kafka. So if you see from the log, we have the master and agent communication all done over Kafka. And it start an agent to be online. This own the command transport. We routing, not using TCP, but we routing through Kafka. Yeah. So, yeah, it's still going. It has the yeah, support on the class loading, data streaming, or command invocation. So, yeah, so it display on the information of the agent here. And then for the next step, I can trigger some job uh, remotely. So let's start with a simple job. Uh, let's say I want to run a simple command. Uh, So as we see here, it start executing from on the agent side. And if you see from here, it's also do the communication things. Yeah, it has a lot of things, yeah. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, I can try a more complex job. Let's say we want to ping Google. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, yeah, so it's been on the agent and yeah, do the command invocation. Okay, so this is the end of my live demo, then I will continue with the presentation. Yeah, maybe so, we could uh, answer some uh, JCS questions, if you do not mind. Uh, yeah, sure. Because, yeah, you, you, you so one of the first questions was about uh, Kafka classic uh, command transport, uh, okay. why it's called classic. Uh, OK, so I uh, there's a class name classic command transport in current remoting one. So what I have done is extend the extend the synchronous command transport. So what I have done is I done the similar thing. So this classic command transport extend the synchronous operation and it send it send the command as a it deserialize the command as a bioarray and send over Kafka. Mm -hmm. Is this answering your question? I hope so. And uh, Jesse also noticed that you still have uh, port 50,000 uh, configured uh, in your Docker Compose. So he asked whether it's needed or not. Uh, I actually, for my part, I never touched that port. So I'm not sure whether it's. Yeah, it's likely. Maybe we can try, we can try it. Uh, yeah, so this port is used uh, for common uh, GNLP transport. What you could show, you could open a remote in configuration in your master. And yeah, since... Uh, I'm not yeah. sure. So go to manage Jenkins. Uh, then, yeah, uh, yeah. Configure global security. And here, if everything is fine, uh, you should... Oh, actually, it's configured. Disable, is it? Yeah, you can disable it and just repeat the demo. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that it actually doesn't use it. 
Disable. Uh -huh. Do we have anything here? You mean I can start? Yeah, you can just start the job again. But yeah. Yeah, let's try. I mean, we. I never try this. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I'll okay. create a ticket to disable it in the demo. So, no uh, Yeah, it's still working. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... so yeah. Well, Any see. other question or? Yeah, so I guess two more. Um, so if anybody else uh, has questions, ask them in the chat. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, how uh, is the actual agent launch uh, done? How actually the agent launch done? Yeah. Okay, I can, maybe I can show the code. So, mm -hmm. so we have, we have this engine.java. I just copy over and modify it for, I mean, it's not completed yet, but I just copy it for a few. So we have engine.java in Jenkins or remote thing, if I'm not wrong. Then I just copy over and do the channel setup with the new command transport. Yeah, so effectively, you just connect to Kafka on the master side, right? Yeah, and then from the Asian side also, I connect to Kafka with the command mm -hmm. And what does happen uh, when uh, you uh, start uh, um, Kafka computer launcher? What happened? Ah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so from the Kafka, yeah, from the, yeah, we override the launch method and we call the set channel method. So this set channel we have to, yeah, so this is a patch in uh, Jenkins core. We, yeah, we use a custom, I mean, it's the, yeah, we use a custom, a new set channel method, which check and the argument set consists of channel builder, command transport, and listener to set up the channel. Mm -hmm. So the command transport is basically the Kafka classic command transport, which uh, extend the synchronous command transport and mm -hmm. yeah, over overriding the methods. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And yeah, the last message is about an I.O. Do we want to use an, an I.O. implementation? Uh, sync implementation consumes a master thread uh, per connection. Mm, sorry, what, what is actually I, what is an I.O. actually, I don't know, uh, sorry. It's uh, just a common concept of uh, connection pooling within a, a thread pool. So instead of oh. creating a connection or a thread page connection, you somehow pull them uh, and uh, uh, manage uh, them. So it uh, improves performance. Yeah, for now, we, for the current implementation, we create new producer and consumer connection for every master agent connection. We may try to improve this for the second phase. Okay. So yeah, maybe it uh, yeah, makes the, sense. The first, for first, the first day, we, our focus is on the command transport. Because we're not sure whether extending the command transport is suitable. I mean, it's working. So yeah, most of the time it's working for the command transport things. So for the second way, I think we can yeah focus more on the Kafka and the reliability of the communication. Yeah, maybe it makes sense to talk about second phase. So we have several minutes left. Okay, so maybe I just run quick through what yep. is my slide. So uh, let's say about the current status. So we have four four step compared to the what is planned. We have four step finished, and uh, and we have 
still a pending task is a release and unfair version of the plugin. So because we still have uh, some issue, some small issue with the improved implementation, and also we need to wait for the core and the remote thing to be released. So currently we cannot release by the end of this phase. Uh, yeah. So for the next phase plan, there are some some plan inside. So first is we need to support the security for the master and agent communication. Because uh, yeah, currently we don't have any security mechanism at all. Uh, next thing is, as I say, we want to improve the Kafka producer consumer model to ensure the reliability. And we need to do bug fixings. And yeah, we decide to move to release the unfair version for in the second phase. There are might be another features which might be helpful. So the first one is we want to use Kafka to store the log file transfer to over, avoid the overloading of channel and blocking of system command. Uh, yeah, and another thing is going to stop bundling, remoting in the client, as well as we can share some message encryption between Kafka. But yeah, this is the other features which might be good. So this is some useful link. So we have GitHub repository, the Jitter channel, the Gen's IO project page, and the blog post. I, yeah, I will try to publish it soon by the end of this week. So yeah, this is the end of my presentation. So let's give some time for Q and A. Okay, I guess uh, there is uh, no more questions. Thanks, uh, JC, for his feedback. If uh, everybody else uh, is interested, uh, there, are, uh, all, there are already guidelines how to run it uh, in the repository. Uh, oh, actually, there is a question. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I see the question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so this, this feature is from the proposal. So it means, yeah, currently we can store, I mean, Actually, yeah. Actually, for now, I cannot. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's from the. I mean, we can use Kafka as a storage for the. We have the sending of log through from master to agent, right? So we can use Kafka to do it, to chance to do the storage. I mean, yeah. Currently, I'm not sure about the details yet, but. Yeah, so it's rather other major features under consideration, mm -hmm. which we haven't uh, designed mean, yet. This is a this is the plan for the second phase. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So uh, then um, I'll briefly uh, summarize the current status of the project. So, yeah, this project uh, is a pretty uh, complex assignment because in order to implement it, uh, we needed to study remote in code base, uh, Jenkins code base, including low-level features like uh, command transports, computer launchers. So it was um, a long uh, um, uh, task for us during community bonding and initial coding phase. But uh, it's great that we have a prototype uh, working uh, at the end of the first phase. Um, it's something which was a kind of our top expectation for the first phase, and we try and achieve that. Obviously, there are many uh, topics uh, to consider, like security, also NIO, and uh, performance. So, but it's just the first phase, and we ha still have eight uh, weeks of coding ahead. Yeah, from my uh, point of view, we've done completed what we expected, and uh, yeah, um, the, yeah, there were lots of uh, pair coding sessions. So we did patches for remoting uh, in order to make it extensible because it appeared that uh, the existing implementation uh, wasn't suitable for our approach. So yeah, uh, there was a lots of work, and uh, yeah, it was pretty fun for me. Thank you, Tuan. Um, and uh, yeah, Spoon, uh, do you have feedback? Oh, yeah.
Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, I think it's a bit uh, complex project because uh, we need to study the low level distributed code base. So, but uh, as of now, we have the working prototype. So that's a great achievement. And uh, he did a good uh, background study during community funding period, which uh, messaging protocol is suitable. So, and uh, yeah, I think uh, he's doing a great job. Okay, yeah, and uh, I would ex explicitly mention that uh, yeah, both me and Supun have uh, experience with RabbitMQ. So uh, our kind of recommendation was to rather consider RabbitMQ, but uh, yeah, put on uh, uh, compared solutions, uh, then said that uh, Kafka would be preferable for this case. He justified that. And yeah, that's why we have taken Kafka, and uh, yeah, it proves to be a successful choice. Uh, so yeah, I think it's also a good thing to highlight. Okay, so uh, uh, let's move uh, to the uh, third project. Um, Abhishek, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, so um, yeah, you can share your screen and uh, I will make you a presenter. Okay, we see your screen. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, yeah, so I am I am Abhishek Gautam. This is my first time participating in Google Summer of Code, and I am working on simple pull request job plugin uh, project. So I am a third year computer science student from India. My college is Vishweshwarya National Institute of Technology. And uh, uh, I have done some internship, two internships in game, game program as a game programmer. And I am also part of ACM chapter and Google Student Developer Club of my college. And I also have some interest in automation, which motivated me to participate in GSOC program with Jenkins. So the project mentors are Martin Aunja, Kristen Whitestone, Whetstone, Jeff K, and Oleg Nanashev. They have helped me uh, in first uh, during this, the first phase very, very well. So project description. Um, the main aim of this project is that users should be able to use uh, YML file to configure the job for pull requests. And the plugin should uh, interact with uh, platforms like GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, etc. And it should also uh, detect the presence of some reports, which will be stored at conventional locations. And if it cannot find them, it will not publish them. And users should also be able to provide location of these reports in YML file uh, in case uh, they are not present in conventional location, but somewhere else. And uh, also, the build status should be updated at, on the platforms like GitHub, GitLab. So there is some prior, prior work uh, related to YML in Jenkins. Um, first one is Travis YML plugin. Uh, what it does, it takes Travis YML and tries to uh, run it as a pipeline job in Jenkins. Uh, and it does not support external pull requests. And also, uh, Travis environment is very different from Jenkins, so it doesn't make sense to use that. And also, it it's last it has a last commit of 14 November 2016 and the development has been slowed down. Next one is CodeShip plugin. Actually, this plugin has never been released. And what it does is it takes steps.yml and services.yml, which are used in a CodeShip platform, and uh, try to build a scripted pipeline to run the job. The third is Jenkins Pipeline Builder. Um, actually, it is a great tool, but uh, it is non-Java-based tool and which cannot be converted into 
pipeline or uh, two Jenkins plugin, sorry. And uh, it supports pull requests and uh, uh, configuration through YML. So uh, it has been decided that uh, this plugin will be built on the top of multi branch pipeline plugin because it provides a nice interface uh, to show branches and pull requests separately. And it also detects uh, trusted revisions in the repository so that wrong, wrong the revision should not be built. Also, it uh, publishes status reports to the uh, platforms GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab. So many functionalities will be inherited from that only. Then we have decided to convert the YML config, uh, take the YML configuration and con build a declarative pipeline to build the job, to run the job. Um, also, uh, in YML, users will be able to specify scripts without the extension of the script. Like on Unix systems, we need a dot sh script to run, but on Windows system, we need a dot bat, bat script to run. So users will only specify the path of the script without extension of the script. And this plugin will detect which machine it is running on. If it is Unix machine, then it will append .sh at the end of the path and run the script, else it will append dot .bat. So um, the things available now are users are able to build the pull requests uh, using Jenkins file.yml. Um, there is a git step implementation, which uh, users will not be uh, using explicitly, but it will be used by, by uh, the step will be called by the plugin itself uh, in case the build build is successful and all test cases are passing and users just able to specify that they want uh, the pull request changes to be pushed to the rep target repository or not in case the build is successful user we can call user scripts fourth the uh, we can, agent configuration is fully supported uh, we we can specify any type of agent we can label, uh, we can use Docker file, we can use Docker as well. Fifth is <clears throat> we can harvest the results and reports. It supports JUnit frameworks and artifact archive artifact steps. And a basic interface to parse the YML and uh, convert it to the declarative pipeline uh, has been implemented. So plugin configuration, how to configure the plugin on the Jenkins. So first of all, if we need to use this plugin, then we need to create a multi-branch pipeline project. Yeah, then there is a build configuration. Then we can you we can select by Jenkins YML here, and in branch sources we need to specify the GitHub. Uh, right now I have GitHub only, uh, but we can specify Bitbucket and uh, GitLab also. The the plugin has not been tested for them till now, uh, but it will be done in next coding phase. So. You can specify Git credentials here. The owner of the repository, you can and uh, you can select the repository which you want. So, yeah, this is the thing which you need to configure. Then, yeah. This is the job I have already configured. And it, there are pull requests. This is a pull request. OK. 
okay demo so let's run the live demo of the for this uh, let me switch to classic view right now webhooks uh, detection of pull request from from webhooks is not supported it, it is a part of second coding phase and so build has been started and the yml file i'm using is this one in this this part is not being used for now for the for the demo it has the agent specifications it has test result paths it has find bug uh, variable configured and these are the stages the, uh, these are this is the name of the stage this is the script uh, which will be called in this stage and likewise following and we have uh, artifact say archive artifact property in which we can give the path to the artifacts which we want to say so the plugin has generated this declarative pipeline from here you can see the docker specification here this is the image this is the args we have specified in the uh yml you can see the yml here and these are the stages this is the script uh if this, the instance will be unix then dot sh will be called as dot bat will be called after the build uh we have we are archiving the artifacts here and in the after the test stage in success we are using jnode step to publish the test results and in and the find bugs step is used here so if you scroll down you can see that uh the pull, re pull request has been fetched and it has been merged uh, to the target branch here you can see that docker specific docker spec specifications has been applied and the build will be will be run in the docker container here's the build here the build has been started and yeah tests are running for now Okay, it is taking time. While we are waiting, maybe you could answer a few questions. So that, or do you want to show something in live? Uh, yeah, we can go to the questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking at what was the first one. Oh, yeah. Um, so I guess the main question from JC is why would you generate a declarative pipeline? The only purpose of uh, for declarative is to make it simpler uh, for humans to read and write, uh, um, etc. You probably. Mm -hmm. The global, uh, what do you mean by global predetermined script? Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure what uh, JC means here. Uh, uh. Okay, so uh, the reason I chose declarative pipeline is that uh, it will be easier to. Uh, write the code to generate the declarative pipeline and maybe it will be uh, uh, it will be easier for other developers to read it and if uh, there are some uh, it has been pointed out that there are some uh, uh, pipeline but uh, they can be uh, overcome using the scripts uh, yeah, 
they can be overcome by using the scripts. So, just, yeah, another possible justification I bet uh, a declarative pipeline is just easier to generate because YAMLs are expected to be declarative and declarative pipeline is also declarative. So, conversion of one format to another seems to be more straightforward. Yeah, we really need to get Jason on this call. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think that uh, we can continue this discussion. Um, uh, there was another question about git push. So, if you scroll up, uh, JC referenced one of the tickets, which is uh, uh, quite popular. Okay. Uh Let's come back to this uh, after the demo. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, here you can see that find bugs are build has been successful. And yeah, here is the find bug analysis, and find bugs has uh, identified 63 unique warnings and zero duplicates. And it has been pub uh, it has published this thing. So, uh, we can go to here and we can see that these are the artifacts that has been archived and these, this is the fun by, uh, find bug analysis and these are the errors that has been uh, found by find bugs. And there is a one test failure. Here it is. Yeah. And uh, the blue ocean view of this is of the pipeline is this. The build is unstable because we found uh, 63 warnings by finder bugs and one test case failure. So, yeah. So the uh, fact that all stages are marked as unstable is a specifics of current uh, behavior of uh, Blue Ocean. So there are tickets for that. Okay. Okay, after the demo. Um, for the coding phase second, we have, uh, I need to formalize a YML format to Jenkins file.yml. And uh, to use the steps in the YML, Jenkins step in the YML, we, uh, I'm working on a step configurator. It's not completed yet. Uh, uh, after it has been, it, it will be completed. Users will be able to use uh, all the steps in the, in the YML file only. Then there is a class, I have wrote a class, snippet generator, uh, in which I am, generating tabs manually i need to get rid of that so uh yeah that is one thing for another thing for it and uh, i need to write tests tests for the plugin yeah so that's it for uh the slides let's go back to questions okay so i have not saw this ticket before. Um, can you explain like what is it about? What did you do? Push step only. So yeah, this is a request to have a step which does git push takes credentials. Uh, so yeah, I guess uh, JC was asking whether your implementation can be used as such step. Uh, and maybe whether it could be moved uh, to git plugin then. Yeah, um, uh, Oleg have, uh, means you are, you only have asked me that uh, we can move this uh, step to some other uh, 
plugin also. So yeah, it can be moved to another another plugin. Mm -hmm. But generally, so I do, uh, uh, simple build step implementation, right? Sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, how do you implement it now? Is it a simple build step uh, implementation, or is it something uh, else? Um, it's a generic step only. I will show you the code. One minute. Here it is. Uh, here it is. Uh, I have mm -hmm. some Git operations class, and in this, I have here it is. So I have this function, this function push. I'm using a Git client plugin in order to push the thing, push the changes. And uh, yeah, this is the step. And I am calling that function, the push function from the Git operations class. And uh, I will get the ID, uh, ID of the uh -huh. what is it uh credentials yeah and the url of the repository and i will call that function and it will push it so do you think like it can be moved to another plugin yeah it uh, looks like a pretty generic implementation so yeah obviously there are uh, some specific topics, but yeah, maybe it makes sense to create a follow-up ticket to upstream it, maybe during the next phase or third phase. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um. Are, there any, are there any more questions? I'm checking KFC right now, but I guess no. Okay. Okay, then, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for your presentation. So maybe mentors could say a few words. Uh, Jeff Martin. Um, I think Jeff is not here, but Martin is. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I just wanted to know, um, uh, Abhishek, at a high level, um, when do you think in the program will you be able to add support for um, the other uh, the other Git repositories, such as Bitbucket and GitLab and so on? Um, well, <laughs> I'm not uh, sure about that, but uh, I think uh, I am not using anything related to GitHub plugin in the code. So I think that uh, it, it will be, it should be pretty simple to just uh, make, uh, to just use the Bitbucket Bit Bit plugin in the uh, for this build uh, but yeah i have to check that if it works and else uh, i think it will take some two or uh, three to four days okay um okay thank you abhishek so um if you, um, if you could um, I'll just summarize the project a little bit. So uh, I reached out to us pretty early in the, uh, in, uh, in the program. Martin, it's hard to hear you. It's hard to hear me? Oh, yeah, now it's better. Okay, so Abhishek reached, us, reached out to us pretty early in the program. Again, I have to admit at the beginning, uh, 
the mentors together with the student, we had uh, some um, a lot of back and forth between us regarding the definition of, of this plugin. So we we had to do a lot of work w uh, with regards to um, to defining what we wanted, um, which is something that has um, unfortunately delayed this part of the coding a little bit. But nevertheless, Abhishek um, was able to deliver a working prototype. So uh, we are we are happy about that. Um, but, uh, uh, it is again uh, hard to hear you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, I have a very bad wireless connection. It seems today. So how about uh, I uh, I conclude with this right now and uh, um, maybe Jeff would like to say something. Yeah, um, I'm assuming. You guys let me know if there's too much background noise and you can't hear me well. Um, but uh, as Martin said, it was a little bit late that the mentors joined in on the project. So I think it was after we actually accepted uh, this into uh, the GSOC projects that we decided to join in. And so then it took us uh, a bit of those first weeks to try to come up with a clear definition of what our project was. Um, so we lost some time there, but I think we, Abhishek was able to do a good job of getting the proof of concept up and running and implementing some of the key features that are needed. And for our next coding phases, we have some clear definitions of areas to improve that were mentioned. Um, and I think as we keep going, we'll uh, continue to find some good improvements on how to make this plugin fit well with the community. So. As our first phase went, uh, I think we're all pretty pretty comfortable with its current states and just looking forward to it proceeding more. OK, thank you for the feedback. Um, regarding the blog post, uh, I will uh, uh, I will polish, polish it uh, uh, after this demo and uh, yeah, uh, try to publish it today itself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We already have a pull request under review. So yeah, uh, we hope to land it soon. OK, I guess that's all these presentations. Uh, thanks a lot to all students for their demos. And thanks a lot for to everybody who participated uh, in the discussion, especially uh, thanks to JC. Next time, we, uh, yeah, please just join the meetings. And yeah, uh, if everybody is uh, watching uh, the presentation, uh, thank uh, you as well. And we are going to publish all materials soon as uh, um, Abhishek said uh, he's working on the blog post, but uh, it's also possible to uh, find uh, all materials on uh, Jenkins JSOC site. So if you go to the uh, projects JSOC, you can find uh, um, all project links here, and we will uh, update statuses of the projects there. So on these pages, you will see all information about the current state and links to the demos. And there are also blog posts. Um, so for example, here you may see Core Coverage API uh, plugin blog post from Xingyu. Um, and if you want uh, to subscribe, uh, there are uh, features in uh, uh, Jenkins IO. And you can just search for the JSOC uh, tag, and you will see all the information. So blog posts for other projects will be available soon, as well as uh, video recordings uh, for them. OK, uh, that's it from me. Thanks, everybody. And yeah, see you at the next evaluation. OK, I'm stopping the broadcast.